All right, friends, welcome back to Jason's Design Shop. Uh, glad you're here and hope you enjoy this oops, video. So this week we're going to go way back to my glory days and make something for that. Um, stick around and see what we're going to do. For this quick little project, all we need is a two and a half by three quarter inch, five foot long piece of oak stock. I've already sanded it, so don't waste your time there. And boom, boom, boom. I've already marked it. So let's get over on the miter saw and cut this up. So we are going to cut this at a 45 upright because if we do it at an angle and lay this flat, it will mess up my brand new insert and cut into it. So I'm messing that up. So we're going to try it this way. Didn't get any tear out there, so I'm happy about that. Part that sucked in did good. So, you know, put these together. It's going to be nice. These two are supposed to be identical. These two are identical. I've done something wrong there. Better too long than too short. That's what I always say. So let's mark that there and cut it correctly. And butt to butt there. Mm. We are a half, half a blade. Maybe I'll go for it since we're here. We got it set up. Let's go for perfection. Bam, here we go. You guessed it, we are making box. What for? That still remains a mystery. Yes, we're making a box for the metals. Look at that. Those are going to push together nicely. That looks pretty good. Alright. My miter saw does a nice job. They say you want the tips to push together more than the interior. That way it's easier to sand and get it to come together tightly in your corner. So over go past the 45, 41 degrees if your machine is off and then you'll get the tips to hit because what you don't want is what you don't want is that. It's much better to have the tips hitting than the inside open a little bit if something's wrong, right? If you're not in perfect, because you could sand those tips and bring it right in a lot easier. Okay, let's glue this together. So get it lined up how you like it, and now we're just going to glue it all up and just leave it like that. The glue will hold it, and we are going to uh, do some cool joints, make some cool things that will make it stronger on the corners. But we just need it to hold. And glue is really strong. So when you push it together, it just line up the corners really well. So one isn't sticking out sharper than the others. And you're good to go. All right, we got one joint out of all of them that doesn't look super sharp. Um, I don't know that it stands out that much. But there is a way to do deal with that on your front face. So you go like that. Shove the glue down in there. Pull the uh, excess off. Then get your chips down in there. Some sawdust. This is pretty big sawdust. I don't know how well it's going to work, but there it is. Sticks to it, and you're good to go. Seam line out here looks pretty good. I don't know that we need to worry about that too much. Maybe a little bit there. And uh, we'll sand that later on. And she's all good. All right. So then pull out my new uh, spline joint jig. Push it up against the fence and uh, hit each corner. I do that three times to give each corner uh, three splines. I think I'll use some walnut for that. Yeah. All the way around. Now, all right, I just cut this strip and these two little guys. Let's see if they're gonna fit in there. Oh, that one's gonna fit good. That one's gonna fit a little tight. Might have to do a little sanding. 
All right, let's cut these in there and see how many we need to make more. too tight. Okay, got these, cut that one off. There's one. Now we just need four times three. Let's see, let's just keep going like this because this makes a nice thin cut, but it looks like we have enough wood. in right there. I'm going to cut the top off there and put hinges between this part and this part. Gotta let them dry. All right, let's uh, cut these off. We only have two blades, the big one or the small one. This feels a lot safer than this. That's crazy. That'll probably chip. Let's use this one. Do them all at once. Looks good. This is a finer blade. Yeah, so cutting all those at 90 degrees it was very slow. It was not working. It had like a pinching effect to it. As soon as I had to speed it up, you can see, turn it more of an angle. Started cutting there at an angle like that, 45. Then it just cut right through them really quick. Nice. Sand that up, do all the sides. Let's do it here. All right, so let's make a bottom. Perfect. Notice the handled push down pad I'm using to keep the piece flat. Uh, it wants to rise up when you have the blade just sticking out very shallow like that. It will lift up and then grab and slam it down and damage your your thin 1 8 inch uh, plywood there so get a pad and be careful bam there's our back see look at this all right that'll go on and get cleaned All right, let's router uh, an edge around there to drop the glass into. Of course, we want it to be on the other side because this is going to be the lid. Turn this on. Sorry to interrupt these great uh, router noises, but um, 
I get tear out. Now, is that a function of something I'm doing wrong, or is that just a function of the wood? Fellow woodworkers, any thoughts? All right, that came out pretty good. I did have some splintering going on there, here. So to solve that, I'm probably just gonna put a little light chamfer with the sander around the edge. I was gonna round this, but now I'm scared if it's that dry and splintery. I'm just gonna go ahead and sand it like I did this, maybe not as much, and just go around it really carefully and take these off. There we go. So now we need to carve out the corners because the glass we cut will definitely be square. So there we go, you can go like this, mark that, mark that, and it gives you a nice corner. Nicely rounded, no slivers now. Because this tears out so bad, I feel like running the whole thing with tape. I'm worried about the corners, mostly chipping out. All right, let's test how good this uh, saw stop is. The trick here, if you don't have a jig for tall things connected to your fence, is to push at the bottom against the fence. See that? And never from the top or you'll rock it over. The top hand, my right hand, is just guiding it, pushing it forward and pushing down a little bit, but not pushing it against the fence or else I have leverage there. It'll bend over and mess up your cut. And it cut it perfect. And finally now to put these two together so they sit nicely, we'll sand this up. And slightly around the edges, barely, just so you don't get a sliver. All right, let's put the back on. It's actually two pieces, but you'll never see it because this other piece will go inside wrapped in the felt. So we want this to be centered so we can pre-drill all the holes. This on so it won't move on us. So I was at the thrift store and I found a box of all kinds of scissors and I found these nice, really strong ones I can have in the garage for a dollar. Great, so that's good use. Check this out. I found this there for a dollar. Pretty cool. I've never used one of these. I've used the kind that go like that, you know, that, that spin. So I am going to try this on this project. All right, I've measured off the depth of my screw there. Don't want it to go too deep. So let's try this thing. It's pretty cool. So I actually just finished uh, restoring this piece, cleaned it all up, got the old oily stuff off the orange there, uh, lubricated the uh, spinny part and sanded the whole handle, which was actually the nastiest part, and refinished it. So it looks like a brand new tool. Works like one too. Well, well certainly not gonna do all of them with that. That's hard on the hand. Yeah, so anyways, this box obviously is like 30 years in the making, I mean, why didn't I make it sooner? I mean, could have bought a box even if I didn't know how to make one before. Um, I think it's kind of a, didn't want to boast, you know, to put up all your medals when you're 20 years old. It seems kind of boastful and look how great I am. And I think I was in, the, in that camp as opposed to maybe the camp which is, oh look, I did something great once. I was, I was successful at something in my life and therefore I can do it again in this new aspect of my life that I've challenging a job or a business or something as you're getting older. 
Um, so what camp do you fall in? Do you think you're one of the other? Is there a third camp? I know they're like people in the military will put up their stuff usually when they're much older or uh, you know s some love to display their stuff and others are like oh bad memories horrible war i don't i don't want to remember any of that and then there's the thought of preserving family history and you know things from grandpa and anyways where do you stand on this issue just uh leave a comment there it is drops in there good nicely centered all right i marked the holes just gotta drill those out we're gonna stain the whole thing first and then we'll put those on there it is, all polyurethaned, ready for the hinges and the interior. Be sure you clamp this down really good. Don't want it moving on you in the middle of hooking these hinges on. And I determined these screws are small enough that I did not pre-drill the holes. And also I had fear of pushing through to the inside. And these screws were short enough they would not go through. And it was right, it worked out great. They didn't pop or split. Then I went down to the uh, material store, Jones, and picked up a half a yard of black felt for like $5. So it's pretty cheap and was able to test wrap this. It was a little too big, so I cut the back board one more time and then glued it on. I've done these two sides, folded them in. Let's hit this side. I hope whoever invented the glue gun uh, really has made millions of dollars off of that invention because, man, what a cool tool has helped so many arts and craft people do all kinds of things so yeah he deserves it or she so this is how i'm laying it out these i just poked in with the needle that you would hang in your shirt or whatever in your, your jacket um so i uh, basically i just glued down the wood plaques in that one uh presidential award thing there and the rest are just hanging off the needles that they came with and it worked out pretty good there it is all right, let's get it in place. I found the Northern California sectional track and field, second place in pole vaulting for all of Northern California. I think I jumped uh, 13.6, something like that. It's got this long ribbon on it, so the only way I can think about dealing with that is put it behind the rest of this, hit it up there. Put that back down into it like that, and it should. There we go. I put my senior key there, I found. Oh, I knew I was forgetting something. I wanted to put magnets in here. Man, there's magnets in here. Maybe here that would snap it shut and hold it shut. Oh, man. All right, got to do that now. Hey, I found my magnets here. Look at that, little teeny ones. Two, and it puts the polarity correctly. What do you think? Three pairs, two, four, six. How do I get them to line up perfectly? Well, the only way I can think of is to close this door on it, give it a nice whack. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see if that was strong enough to make a mark. Yeah, I got a circle there. Circle there. This is actually quite tricky not to drill too deep because you want it to be flush, right? But then you put some glue in there. I used a glue gun because that's what I had easily available and it uh, lifted the whole thing up. So I ended up popping some out and drilling a little deeper and re-gluing them in. Right, got three on the bottom on. Now what's got to do up here? Right there, here we go. I'm actually not happy with this. It did not grab as tight as I expected. Those magnets are pretty small. So I went ahead and drilled two more in there, giving five magnets, and then it felt like it had some grab to it and uh, would actually hold it closed. So five magnets, those are really small ones though. 
Hey, if you're enjoying this build, I would be totally honored if you would click the subscribe button, maybe the thumbs up, help the algorithm. Thanks, friends. All right, some glass ready for the wall. All right, last stage. Got this nice thin eighth inch, quarter inch, uh, one eighth inch plexi. Boom. And I just marked it with a Sharpie because it has a peel off. Now we gotta cut and snap it off. It should drop right in there. Okay, what you're supposed to be able to do is just score it and it should snap. Here we go. So I wanna be able to get deep enough. Ah, they say that's all you gotta do. Well, let's see. You can take it. Put it over the edge here. Just break off. Whoa, that worked. It snapped right on the line. Love that. Okay, let's close that back up. Cut the plastic. Now we have all this piece for something else. More than I needed. <laughs> that would be good. Oh, it moved on me. Push down hard. Clean this bad side up better. It'll fit perfect. I figure that out. Let's see if this big sander upside down will sand it. That's loud. Then here. This part, one end of it is not happy. All right, let's see now. Boom, boom, boom. All perfect. So that's pretty fun. This stuff is sandable. Can you do that with glass? No way. All right, peel the plastic off. Put some glue in. We don't ever want it coming out. All right, what kind of glue do we put in there? Yeah, so first I put in some wood glue and that put white spots behind the glass. Oops, mistake. Took it apart, wiped it all out. And then I thought some nails in the four corners would be more conspicuous and... No, it bubbled. See, it pinched the glass and made it bubble out in the middle. Well, I was gonna start putting nails everywhere. So I, luckily they weren't very deep, popped them out and then I found this um, Gorilla Glue that was uh, super glue basically and it's clear. So there you go, a much better situation. You can see right through it to the wood and it doesn't stand out at all. And then I got that little bracket for the back. Found that one there in all my junk. And uh, <laughs> it worked great. Screwed it onto the back, drilled out the holes first and uh, it's ready to hang up, baby. All right, there it is in its final location. Pull the plastic off of here. Oh boy. Uh-oh. 